Hello everyone and welcome back to Neptune's Child Tarot. My name is Monique and this is my second tarot channel here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for your continued love and support here on the channel. Today's pick a card reading we are doing where are you on your spiritual path? So I do have some piles prepared for you guys to choose from. If by chance you do feel drawn to more than one of the piles, um, go with whatever your intuition is telling you. Um, that is perfectly okay for today's reading. So where are you on your spiritual path? Pile number one, you are going to be this ocean jasper. So ocean jasper for pile number one. For pile number two, we have a flower agate heart. So flower agate for pile two, and then pile number three, we have a firework obsidian. So Firework Obsidian for pile number three. Where are you on your spiritual path? Pile one with the Ocean Jasper, pile two with the Flower Agate, and then pile number three with the Flower Obsidian. Timestamps will be down below for you guys, and I will see you at your reading. Hi, Pile One. So those of you that resonated with the Ocean Jasper, this is going to be your reading today. So we're finding out where are you on your spiritual path. Uh, let's see. Let's put these after. Um, this one here is going to be your guidance uh, at the end. So I'm just going to move this aside for now. Um, okay, so let's see. Where are you on your spiritual path? Pile one. We have the bird with freedom and opportunity. We have the chipmunk and laurel with success. We have the sickle with focus, regrowth, and letting go. We have the lizard and pitcher plant with stagnation. And then we have card number 10, the keeper of love. Okay. So let's see the rest of your cards here. We have the Underworld. Uh, we'll put these to the side for now. We have the Hanged One, which is the Hanged Man. We have Death. We have Rebirth, which is the Judgment card. We have the Eight of Pentacles. And we have the Nine of Pentacles. Pile one, I can already say, <laughs> looking at this energy, I am so proud of you. Um, I'm so proud. <laughs> this looks like such a beautiful energy of you doing the work, doing the work on your path. And I feel like it, it definitely shows. Um, I'm going to look at your three little archetype cards here. Um, and we'll start talking about, uh, this energy here. So let's see what we have. 
We have the Shaman, which is card number 16. We have number five, the Orphan. And then we also have card number 60 with the Kiss. Okay. I'm gonna try to figure out a way so that this all of this isn't blocked, but basically what this looks like here is there there is a profound amount of uh transformation that you guys have been doing and where do i even want to start with this okay so let's start off with your major arcana here You've got the Hanged Man, the Death card, and we have the Judgment card. So the Hanged Man energy is about a change or a shift of perspective. It's also about being in a state of surrender, meaning letting go and letting go of that need to try to control things in your life, which is and can be very challenging on our spiritual path because as we go through life's journey um it's hard for us to just let go of that need to try to manipulate the outcomes of something so i feel like overall that you have come to a place of really starting to understand the ways in which the universe works with you. And so I definitely feel that you have done a lot of inner work on yourself. And I feel like with the hangman energy, because this because it has to do with a change of perspective, this is more or less us being open to other perspectives and being able to see things in a completely different way. Because with the hangman energy, this is Neptune, the planet Neptune energy, which I feel like this helps you to shift away from certain illusions and to really kind of open your eyes to you know seeing things in a completely different way so the hangman is actually an energy that provides us insight enlightenment um and with that comes growth comes transformation not only of our of our sight of our vision the way that we see ourselves the way that we see others but also how we show up in the world and how we you know, move through life in a completely different way. So we have judgment here, which is rebirth. Um, so I definitely feel like there is, you know, a lot of this whole death and rebirth energy that you're going through, a lot of powerful um, transformation um, that's happening for you. And so here, even in this death card here, there's, this is a cemetery. And so I feel that uh, what do I want to say here? I'm, I'm noticing that you guys have the shaman here. Um, and the shaman's path is a very challenging one. Um, so I don't doubt that those of you that chose this pile have really come into contact with a lot of your own darkness. Um, and oftentimes, um, the darker aspects of self, the shadow self, um, is something that we oftentimes neglect. Um, and so I feel like being that you have the underworld here and the shaman, um, that a lot of you have really taken a deeper dive. Your path may have also been a, a little bit more challenging, I would say, than most. Um, for, for those of you that are not familiar, the shaman's path, um, and you know, some of you may literally be feel, feel called to, uh, work, 
uh, as a shaman studying shamanic practices um, or even connecting with um, shamans that you can study with. Um, healers, okay, would be another one here. Um, but the shaman's path is a very challenging one, and it really kind of puts them literally into the underworld, into the darkness, into connecting and working with the spirit realm and kind of being that person who kind of sits in that space to connect with spirit and also with the living. And so I feel that many of you that chose this pile, you probably do have mediumship abilities um, you have a very strong connection to both worlds. Um, and the path of the shaman can be one where your ancestors, okay, some of you might have um, ancestral line with shamans. And of course, the term is going to be different depending on what type of culture um, you're from. Um, you know, our ancestors have many different uh, practices and belief systems and things of that nature. So the name may change a little bit depending on what culture you're from. But typically the shaman is, you know, think thought of as the medicine man, woman, um, the healer. Um, and so I don't doubt that within your ancestry that the shamanic practices um, or that they're within your ancestral line that there may have been one person who was appointed by, you know, uh, tribes or villages or uh, towns or whatever it may be, depending on where that your ancestors were located within the world. Um, and these gifts may have been something that have been passed down to you. Now, the path of the shaman is one that can be very challenging in that oftentimes the path to shamanism is very dark and it may be that it feels very challenging. Um, you may ex have experienced a lot of trauma, a lot of, um, I'm noticing that we have the orphan here. So this also makes me feel that a lot of you might feel very alone or very isolated in that darkness or on that path. Um, and so basically with the shaman's path, it is really finding and navigating through one's own darkness, which can sometimes mean that some of the things that you've gone through on your path have put you in some really low places. Um, and the whole point of that is for you to be able to heal and move through and face that darkness within to illuminate those darker shadowy aspects of the self in order for you to balance them with your light energies. Um, and I feel that many of you that may have chosen this pile may also feel called to work as healers, as shamans, or so even taking on some type of shamanic practices and helping others to heal. And so um, if you're wanting to know more, I'm not going to go fully into, you know, talking about shamanism, but if you're interested in it, there's a lot of beautiful videos from creators. Um talking about shamans and the history of them and stuff like that, that you can really kind of look into their path, but it is a very dark, very challenging one. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like the spirits, the spirit world, um, ancestors choose you um, to be that person. Um, people can also, yes, take up, take, um, uh, shamanic practices, you know, into their own study. Um, and some people choose to go and sit with a shaman um, from, you know, maybe a different culture, maybe the culture that is your background to study and learn from, you know, to to then be able to uh, be become, you know, a shaman. But um, what I'm noticing here is aside from you having this profound amount of growth, transformation, change of perspective. Um, I certainly do feel like you 
have received a lot of enlightenment through looking within the shadow, okay, within the underworld. And that's going to be more or less the darker parts of the psyche, looking into um, the subconscious and really starting. It almost kind of feels like there's a lot of weeding out of things that may have kept you blocked. So it's more or less because I do see stagnation here. But we also have the sickle right next to that. And it says focus, regrowth, and letting go. So this makes me feel that because there's already been work that you've already been doing, you've been able to really identify where there are certain things that you need to change. And I feel like you have no problem doing it, okay? I feel that with the bird here, it says freedom and opportunity. And also there's a little vulture here. Um, which vultures are nature's cleanup crew. Uh, <laughs> they're nature's cleanup crew. So it, it is really about you releasing and letting go of these old versions of self. And it's not to say that this is easy work to do. It's definitely a lot of work. Um, not everyone chooses this path to really look into those darker aspects of the self because sometimes that work can be incredibly triggering it can be painful um if you've gone through trauma it can be you know kind of like in a way re-traumatizing yourself so there might be you know some of you that feel like i need somebody to help me i need to work with a therapist or i need to work with a shaman a healer depending on what your beliefs are you know some people feel um very guided to uh get assistance with, um, you know, a, a therapist, a psychotherapist, where some people's belief systems um, work with uh, more holistic um, alternative healing modalities, where going to a shaman would be something that would resonate with them a little bit more, okay? I myself have seen a mix of both words because I do have a nursing background um, where, you know, it's it's more or less uh, focused on that aspect of conventional or traditional, or I would say more or less Western, right, Western medicine, in terms of he trying to work towards healing the body in that way and working with um, medical professionals in that way. However, I'm also indigenous. So there is also those other belief systems, practices that are more resonant for me. Um, so it's all, you know, a matter of whatever helps you, you know, different, different things are going to work for different people. I can say for myself personally, I've had the most profound healing experiences working with people who are shamans, working with people who um, have different types of alternative healing modalities versus working with therapists. Um, but that's just me. Um, so everybody's going to be different. Uh, but I feel like you have the eight of pentacles here and also the nine of pentacles. So the eight of pentacles is about self mastery and it's about really committing and dedicating yourself to putting in that effort and that work. And then you also have the nine of pentacles here, which is about independence, security, stability, sovereignty. So I feel that you guys are well versed and again not saying that this has been easy this is a lot of difficult work a lot of challenging work but i feel like you have made a profound or will because some of you could still be in that process of delving into the depths of the shadows and the darkness and like i said a lot of this work is not for the faint of heart a lot of people shy away from really looking at those darker, darker, shadowy aspects of the self, because it can be so triggering. Um, you know, so, but I feel like it's almost like you guys are working on, it, it kind of makes me feel like many of you through the life experience that you've had, you've already been in the dark. You've already been in the dark. You've already, you've already been in that place. You know, some of you, yes, you may have been exploring and kind of really deep diving into that, but I feel like there's been a lot of realizations, a lot of epiphanies that you've had. Um, a lot of you freeing yourself from 
things that may have created stagnancy for you. Um, you know, I, I feel like you're very focused on your path. Um, identifying where you're getting stuck. There's awareness of it. Um, there's a change perspective about it. And I feel like this has really worked towards you freeing yourself from a lot of those old versions of self, old ways of thinking, self-sabotaging thoughts to where you are literally saying goodbye to the old version of self and continuing to release and let go and forgive and to heal and to release all of these things. And I feel like for some of you with the underworld here, it makes me feel like you're recognizing, okay, there's still stuff there that I need to work on and willing to do the work. And I feel like it shows because you have success here with the little chipmunk and Laurel, um, you know, opening yourself to expansion, to growth. Um, some of you with the orphan here, you may quite literally have abandonment wounds, childhood, inner child wounds that you're healing. Um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like you, you know, you're, you're really learning how to balance Certainly grounding yourself in, you know, the physical 3D world. But I also feel like you are getting even more comfortable with shifting between the two worlds. Okay, between the spirit world and uh, the living world. Um, like I said, some of you might feel alone, a little isolated. Um, maybe kind of feeling like you don't fit in or like people don't understand you. Um can be a, a very challenging place, but I'm definitely getting that there's, you know, this energy here within you of really wanting to heal. Uh, and this may even be helping to heal others. And with your keeper of love here, and then you also have the kiss, which is also a very romantic, loving type of energy here. I feel like a lot of this change is also happening to you in terms of your heart space, like heart chakra awakening, helping to remove blockages within the heart chakra, healing the inner child, facing the shadow aspect of the self and doing the shadow work. And for those of you that are not familiar with what shadow work is, the shadow work is something that we can do every day. Okay. It just takes us more or less having awareness of where our own thoughts are at. Um, when you're out in public, when you're at work, okay. Um, we don't necessarily have to like sit down and say, okay, I'm doing shadow work right now. <laughs> um, this could be something that you experience and live every day. And what I mean by that is let's just say that you're standing in line at the grocery store and there's a person ahead of you that is saying something to the cashier and you get triggered because of something that they say. Okay, so right there in that moment, there is something that is hitting a nerve within you. And the shadow self is more or less those parts of us that have been repressed, that have been rejected, that have been forgotten. Um, it is those parts of ourself that we may have put away for fear that they would be rejected, abandoned, um, or even uh, not accepted by other people. Okay, so what our purpose is, right, in life for all of us, regardless of what our path is, we all are meant to reclaim those parts of self and to reintegrate them into wholeness, oneness. Um, and so that is why it's so important, right, for us to do that inner work, for us to feel whole, for us to feel complete, for us to feel love, which is here. So I feel like as you're cutting away and releasing and restabilizing and grounding your energy and putting forth all of this effort into self-mastery, there is also this feeling, I almost kind of look at this as you releasing things that no longer fit, right, with who you are and who you're becoming as you continue to evolve on your path. But it's also, you know, giving those places, giving those parts, love, compassion, kindness, to help you with reintegrating those parts of self that are truly you to helping you to feel 
more grounded, more stable, more strong, um, which is a very beautiful uh, energy here. Now, some of you, like I said, you could still be healing maybe some abandonment wounds or rejection wounds or healing the inner child here. Um, reaching deep. I mean, I'm kind of looking at the shaman energy here and it looks like this hand, it actually kind of looks like outer space, but I'm, I'm kind of seeing that as, as reaching into the veil to connect with the spirit realm. Um, this right here with these two hands that are holding each other, this also makes me feel like you're finding balance and union within yourself. There's really this energy of love coming through you, filtering through. Um, a lot of your thoughts, feelings, emotions are changing to that of love and connection to the divine. Feeling that sense of oneness and love within the self um, that is kind of permeating within your very being and then radiating outward. So it's a really beautiful um, energy that's here. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said in the very beginning, <laughs> I'm so proud of you because this looks like such beautiful transformational energy here, really working towards freeing yourself, letting go, you know, doing a lot of this inner work that can be very challenging. Like, but like I said, I don't doubt that many of you that chose this pile, it's a difficult one. And your path may have been very challenging and very difficult, maybe painful, maybe traumatic. Um, you know, some of you might have even had this feeling of your entire life kind of being like a dark night of the soul and feeling like you've been trying to find your way out of it to find that inner light within. But I feel like you're really on your path to self mastery here, sovereignty, um, transformation, rebirth, a completely changed perspective about yourself and about life. I mean, success being here says a lot. Like you've been able to overcome a lot, even identifying where there are things that keep you stagnant and being able to clear, right, with that sickle there, to clear and cut things away, to release things, to help you to open yourself up to new opportunities and such. Okay, so let's see what your advice is here and I'm actually using for this deck the Kuan Yin uh, Oracle because and it's odd that this was coming through for you guys because I only use this deck for myself really I don't even I haven't even used this I think I used it maybe like a few times for collective readings but I have not used this deck for anyone else aside from myself in years but let me just take a look because I know this deck has some imagery that is not okay for YouTube, but this one's fine. So we have the threshold number 39. So let's see what that one is about. Okay. 39. Okay, so it says, at the threshold you stand, before you lies a way of being that is beyond fear. It is a sacred passing through a karmic veil into a new life of empowerment, peace, spiritual service to humanity, and joy in your own soul. Wow, <laughs> it says, congratulations. You are embarking on a phase of deepest soul liberation into freedom of love that triumphs over fear. It has been quite a journey. Many, many lifetimes and much inner work has been required for you to be able to perceive the light of the divine even underneath the density of fear. You are fast approaching the karmic threshold where you can shift from fear-based to love-based embodiment. This is a sacred and important time where it is wise to surround yourself with those that are able to support you in this love-based reality. In the near future, you will be able to sustain your vibration even amongst beings that are based in fear. And then you will be of even greater service to life, love, and divine power on this planet. For now, allow beloved Kuan Yin to help you to connect to the beauty and potency the love and fearless, endless joy of your own higher self. 
Do not be disheartened by any old fears that are surfacing. You do not need to create a story out of them. You can just observe them with love and allow them to pass. It is just your inner self releasing any vibration which is not aligned with unconditional love. Sometimes there can be deep testing on the threshold. This is not an exam to be afraid of, but an opportunity to realize your development and to really be secure on a firm inner spiritual foundation. Hold on a second before moving forward in your soul service to others through how you live and be on this planet. It is no use in preparing to assist others on a higher scale and moving from fear to love if you are still making the transition yourself. Let yourself stabilize in the new vibration and then your ability to help others will increase naturally with much grace, assistance, and effortlessness. And well done, beloved. <laughs> there is much love and celebration in these spiritual worlds about this shift for you. Remember that the only defense ever needed, no matter what the apparent fear or threat, is unconditional love in the heart, which allows for compassion and detachment. You are safe and you are quickening in your readiness to pass the threshold. Your journey is truly blessed. Okay, such a beautiful, like I said, I am so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud by all one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that is all that I have for you guys. I hope that this reading was helpful for you and I will see you in the next one. Hi, Paul 2. So those of you that resonate with the flower agate, this is going to be your reading today. Um, and so we're asking spirit today, where are you on your spiritual path? So let's see, we're going to put your tarot aside. This is going to be your guidance at the end. So we're going to look at that later. So where are you on your spiritual path? Pile two. We have winter and it says an ending, recharging and reflection. We have the turtle and coriander with satisfaction. We have, wow, look at that. There's two like winter cards here. We have snow with rest and contemplation. Very similar energies. And then we have the ram and dahlia with determination. Okay. And then we have number four, Keeper of Waves. Okay, let's take a look. We have Cosmos. I'm going to save your archetypes to the side for a moment. Your Tarot, we have the Queen of Swords. The Princess of Swords, which is the Page of Swords. We have the Princess of Jars, which is the Page of Cups. We have the Ace of Pentacles. And then we have the Four of Wands. Okay. And let's take a look at your little archetype cards here. We have the Starborn. Where do I want to put this? We have the Destroyer. And then we have the Stone. Okay, so where are you on your spiritual path? Okay, so it is very clear here that with these two oracle cards, this is talking about 
rest, reflection. Um, it kind of reminds me of like hermit energy where we're just, you know, taking some time to pause to reflect upon where you're at right now, what types of experiences have brought you to this point along your journey. Um, I'm noticing that we do have a turtle here. Um, and so that turtle kind of reminds me of the slow and steady movement, okay? Um, however, I feel that because you have the ram and the dahlia here with determination, that you do recognize right now that there is still, you know, work that you're doing, um, still healing, but I feel like for the most part with satisfaction here, it is feeling good about what work you have done as you should be right now. What do I want to say here? Um, the Page of Cups energy, I'm kind of seeing this, and I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second. The Page of Cups energy can be about self-love, nurturing. Um, I feel for many of you, this is really learning to be more attuned to your spiritual gifts, to your intuition. Um, I feel like things are starting to become a little less foggy for you and more, you know, more clear. Um, we do have the Page of Swords energy here. Now, the Page energy is kind of like the mind of a student, learning, asking questions, discovering things. Um, doing research, right, which might very well be where you're at right now is really learning, um, which is important because we're learning new things about the self. We're learning things about, let's just say, healing. Um, this is a very inquisitive energy, very curious. You know, some of you might be thinking right now, okay, what can I do for healing? What can I do for this? How can I become? So like kind of like, you know, uh, researching, right, uh, online. Some of you might be using um, YouTube, which is also a good uh, source of information because there's a lot of creators, you know, on YouTube. There's um, people who are sharing their spiritual journeys and, you know, um, you know, you might be even be kind of feeling like you're leaning towards even as you watch, you know, tarot readings, pick a card readings, that you're feeling more called to the spiritual and really working on nurturing that aspect of the self. Um you know, we do have the cosmos here. So I kind of feel like there is certainly more of this awareness that you have to others and the way that in which you're um, shifting and changing in terms of your mindset. Yes, there's still learning that's happening here. But like I said, I kind of feel like your channel is becoming clearer. And I feel like you are starting to recognize right where there is I mean, for some of you, there might be more of a focus on self-love and healing and nurturing the self. And because you have the Ram and Dahlia here with determination, it, it, to me, it's kind of like your mindset is on, like, I'm healing. I'm focused on doing this inner work. I want to be able to be this better version of self. And I want to create this new beginning of stability in my life. I'm more discerning with who I allow into my life, who I communicate with, um, so it's, it's you being sharper in terms of the wisdom, the knowledge, and then learning from or what you've been learning, then integrating that into your practice, into your life moving forward. So I certainly feel like there is a lot of knowledge that you've also gained. You're looking at things in a different way. Um. I feel like many of you are really working on strengthening your connection to spirit, to your higher self, to the divine. Um, what else do I want to say here? I, I think I want to look at this. Uh, what is this? The Keeper of Waves. I want to look at that because I don't even know what this card is about. So... That is number four. And this is the Unlocking the Secret Garden Oracle. All 
Okay, it says the keeper of waves is here to encourage you to honor your natural rhythms. The high tides and the low tides both have a purpose for your growth. Allow them to ebb and flow as they need to. Don't judge the shores of your life based on how much shell treasure is on the beach, how high the water is, or how dry the sand has become. Make room for the coming and going, the passion and depletion, the roar of the surf, and the quiet lapping of the tide. And by all means, don't be afraid of making waves just by being yourself. The moon does it all the time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this makes me feel like there's definitely you getting better attuned, okay, to honoring these cycles of resting, of flowing, of moving, you know, really learning how to like I said, better tune into your own intuition. Now, the pages in the tarot, they do represent us being a novice at something. We're learning, we're studying, we're growing, you know. And I certainly feel that in terms of your mental space, um, your thought process, your beliefs, like all of these things are really working on, on and you're changing them. Um, I feel that you guys have this awareness of the work that you've already done and being proud of yourself, like I said earlier, as you should be for um, your determination, um, being strong, being wise, you know, to be able to think and take some time to think, okay, like what's next, you know, but honoring this cycle of rest is also important, right? Because sometimes working on your healing, you know, it can be quite the process, you know, and sometimes we do need to take a break right? We can't be in, in healing mode all the time. Sometimes we need to, you know, focus on other aspects of our life and take a break from, you know, healing and just kind of focus on other things. Um, but yeah, I feel like for the most part, many of you are very proud of yourself for the work that you've already done, creating new beginnings for yourself. Um, it is certainly something to celebrate here. Um, now with the stone, I want to say that with the stone here, um, this card more or less talks about um actually the backstory with it i should start with that is more or less letting us know that the stones that we see right out in nature the little rocks the little pebbles things like that boulders those rocks have been around for millions of years okay <laughs> millions of years um, and they've also changed, right, over time through weather and through, you know, many different things that have happened here on Earth. And so those stones um, are, are shaped over time. They're changed. They're, they're kind of being uh, reshaped in different ways. So basically what this is symbolic of is your transformation, your growth through time and through the experiences that you've had okay um but it is also i feel like for you finding that that stability that groundedness now with the destroyer here you know this makes me feel that you especially with this queen of swords because the queen of swords is very wise very knowledgeable and is far more discerning than she may have been in the past because of the experiences that she's been through and the knowledge that she's gained and then now starting to integrate that wisdom into her life moving forward. So with the destroyer here, this makes me feel, like I said, that you're a lot more careful and a lot more discerning with who and what you give your energy to. This is also you working towards releasing and letting go of anything that is not in alignment for your highest good. Now, being that we also have the starborn here, many of you may also be starting to awaken to what your soul's path is, what your soul's mission is, your purpose. Now, specifically with starborn energy, this card is talking about us having this feeling. And for some of you, you may have had that feeling since you were very small, since you were a child. And for others of you, this may have been something that you've become aware of maybe recently. The Starborn is having this feeling that you are meant for something greater. You're not meant for the mundane. You're not meant for the nine to five job. You're not meant to, to kind of be, you know, doing what everybody else is doing. 
this is when we feel that we are meant for something greater. We're meant for something bigger. We're wanting to make our mark in the world. We're wanting to be able to do something different, something that could certainly be leaving behind a legacy for future generations, right? The stone um, to come. And so you could be very focused, determined to say, you know what, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. This is what I feel called to do. And having the vision and then being able to take decisive action towards making that happen. So this really looks to me that you have this energy about you that is not wanting to give up on yourself, which is a beautiful thing of wanting to really work hard towards becoming your truest potential, your highest version of self and identifying where there are things in your life that are not aligned and removing them because the queen of swords she is quick to cut something or someone out of her life that is not in alignment she's not going to stand for it the queen of swords is a no bs type of energy has very firm boundaries um and like i said is very wise some of you might also be kind of um, having some gifts uh, coming online in terms of your clairvoyance, your clairaudience, um, and being able to then also channel information from the divine. So you might be receiving a lot of downloads right now, you know, where spirit is telling you, hey, it's time to rest. Now it's time to flow. Now it's time to move. You know, just kind of fully tuning into the information that spirit is kind of giving to you at this time. Um, spirit kind of assisting you with helping you to identify even what are the things that are not in alignment for you. You're receiving that information, right? And so it's up to us to then follow that intuitive guidance. But I feel like you guys are doing that. Okay, so now let's look at your, um, your guidance. Now, um, as I was telling pile one, I d don't really use this deck for collective readings. Um, this was a deck that I bought probably about five years ago for myself. Uh, but I think it's only made an appearance before in like two pick a card readings. Um, and I haven't even used this. So I'm going to check really quick because there's are some images in this deck that are not YouTube friendly. Uh, this one's okay. Okay. So this one is the blossoms of the sky dancer number three. So we're going to look at that. And this is the Kuan Yin, uh, Oracle. So number three. Okay, so it says, Kuan Yin dances creative energy and light across the sky, causing blossoms to descend. In the same way, when we tap into our spiritual power of creation, we cause our life and all life around us to bloom. Creation is a natural spiritual power within you, beloved. Force can slow down the process. It is time to stop striving and to allow your manifestation to occur. Trust, let go, allow your creation to flow. Kuan Yin is a being of divine feminine power. She dances with the sky, the heavenly powers of inspiration, and as a result, life blooms around her. Kuan Yin brings you guidance that you are creating something important right now, something that is aligned with heavenly forces and light that is significant for the path of spiritual awakening on this planet. Whether you are fully conscious of it or not, it is happening. Your spiritual light is flowing into the physical plane with the intention to manifest certain life situations and circumstances. These manifestations are in accordance with your spiritual path and Kuan Yin will support you in their manifestation with her sky dance, which calls the divine light of inspiration and support into earthly creation so that we can experience the divine in form here on earth. The way of the sky dancer, Kuan Yin, is the yin way or the way of divine magnetism. Yin power is the consciousness and beingness that allows us to draw into our lives that which we desire. We become attractive to it, wealth, well-being, peace, passion, purpose, friendship, support, success, and so on. Rather than going out and striving for it as though we do not have it within us already, we can grow in our ability simply, I'm sorry, we can grow in our ability to simply be and become simultaneously. 
until we experience it physically in our lives. It is only a matter of time until it happens. To cultivate yin power, to allow creation to manifest in your physical reality, you can focus more on the following. I'm sorry, focus more on allowing, <laughs> flowing, surrendering, and participating in the greater flow. Rather than the usual ways in Western culture of doing, making things happen, forcing, intending, and holding, Kuan Yin guides you now to balance doing with being. Beingness is presence, it is appreciation, it is joyful stillness and wonder. It is the re realization within that you are a spiritual magnet, and whatever you want to attract, you can. Simply by cultivating the qualities you seek to experience externally within you. She guides you to sky dance with her now, to become receptive to heavenly energies and to allow the manifestation to blossom like flowers falling from her divine feet. Okay. All right. So that is all that I have for you. Pile number two. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, Pile 3. So those of you that resonate with the Firework Obsidian, this is going to be your reading today. So we're finding out where are you on your spiritual path. Um, let's see. Let's hold these till later. This is going to be your guidance at the end. So we'll look at that a little later. So pile number three, where are you on your spiritual path? We have hearth and it says safety, comfort, and spiritual connection. We have the butterfly and snowdrop with hope. We have the moth. Wow, look at that. You've got a moth and a butterfly here. It says mystery, concealment, and illusion. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my, look at this. The moth and eucalyptus with an ending. Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> There's two, oh my goodness, there's two butterflies here and two moths. What in the world? <laughs> Number 32 with expectation. What in the world, pile three? This is crazy. Is there any moths or butterflies over here? No, let's see. We have productivity. So these are little bees. So productivity. We're going to save your little archetypes. Tarot. Okay. So seven of jars, which is the seven of cups. The ace of jars. So the ace of cups. the Melisse, which is the High Priestess in this deck. We have the Two of Swords. Okay, I see what's going on here. We have the Prince of Pentacles, which is the Knight of Pentacles. This is so interesting. <laughs> two moths, two butterflies. Okay, let's look at your archetype cards here. We have the eternal child. The box. Hmm. And the healer. Okay, let me just sit with this for a second. So you've got the hearth here, safety, comfort, spiritual connection. 
we've got some candles up there, which I always look at candles as like this illumination, something that's being illuminated here. Wasn't there candles? Oh yeah, there is candles right here. Okay, okay. So the moth says mystery, concealment, and illusion. Your seven of cups can be a card about illusions. What's interesting about the seven of cups card here, and it's actually the, the story that's in the book with this card, because the seven of cups can talk about um it can talk about options and choices and things of that nature, but I feel like where this relates to you for spiritually, because we are doing a spiritual reading today, the Seven of Cups can talk about illusions. And sometimes that something that we perceive is is not clear, it's foggy, right? Or, or kind of not seeing something clearly. So we have mystery illusion here. Now in this card, this is actually talking about this woman here that's sitting at the table with these books and they're on the table there's these jars of honey and so she what this is basically pointing out in this in this card is notice how her sweater okay this is one of the things that was brought up in the book that i remember from reading it when i first got this deck Notice how her sweater is really baggy for her, okay? It's super baggy, almost like it's not her sweater. Um, and there's all these jars of honey. There's all these books that are talking about, what does it say? Like beekeeping and stuff like that, okay? So basically what this card is implying with this picture is that she is giving you the illusion that she is the beekeeper when in fact she is not. Um, she kind of, in a, in a, some way, she's kind of displaced in this, in this picture here. So being that we do have these two little candles here, like I said, I kind of look at these as something that's being illuminated for you here. Um, it, it makes me feel that there, there is a lot of things that are coming to light for you here. How do I want to say this? I feel like what's important here is this card, the box, because this archetype card talks about us being trapped. So this reminds me of like eight of swords energy within the tarot, which is when we are keeping ourselves stuck in a mental prison of our own doing negative thoughts, self-limiting beliefs. And so all see how there's the light in the center here and there's all of these little boxes that are around and around and around. So think of you as that light in the center that is needing to kind of work through all of these layers of things that are creating limitations. Okay. And perhaps that is illusions in this case. Now, the beautiful thing is that we do have the high priestess here and the high priestess is your own intuition. It's your own inner knowing. However, the two of swords energy here can talk about confusion and sometimes denial. Sometimes there could be certain things that we're not looking at. Um, now, this could be that we're choosing to keep ourselves willfully blind to certain illusions. Um, this also makes me feel that you are working, you know, on your spiritual path, but there are things that are still limiting you. And these may be things that are slowly being illuminated for you and you having those realizations about a limiting belief system, the mindset. Um, maybe even it, it could even be uh, certain things about yourself, right? Maybe sometimes this could be that there's some aspect of the self that we're not self-aware of. So I feel like that you are someone who is very intuitive, but I also feel that you doubt yourself 
that sometimes you get confused and you have a hard time differentiating between what is the illusion and what is the truth. What is my intuition actually telling me here? And don't feel bad about that because this is all something and we have to understand and do not ever compare your path to anyone else's. We're all on different uh, paths. We're all at different stages of our awakening, our evolving, growing. Um, you know, some of us, it takes us a little longer, right, to kind of see things or understand things. Um, and sometimes we are releasing a lot of old belief systems, conditioning, um, illusions that we've been stuck in for years, decades sometimes. So this is basically a lot of this unpacking, a lot of kind of breaking away one little layer at a time for you to really kind of work towards finding your inner light. I feel because you do have productivity here that this is spirit saying you are working on it. You're working on trying to identify what is the illusion, what is the truth, what is from my intuition. There are still things that are still unclear to you. And that's okay. Um, you're working towards being able to um, change this, I feel like. You know, the Knight of Pentacles energy here is about slow and steady movement, meaning that you're taking the little baby steps, but you're committing yourself to growth, okay? Um, many of you with the eternal child here can be working towards healing your inner child. This may also be that you are getting better connected in with your inner child, which is also a beautiful thing because our inner child is also a symbol of purity and innocence. And it is also kind of like our purest version of self, you know, that is our higher self. And when we can connect to our inner child, it can really help us to get super connected in with our authentic self our higher self, our inner child, that purest version of self. And so I feel like many of you are, you know, working towards healing the inner child, getting re-connected um, with uh, the inner child, really working towards building your connection to your higher self. You know, some things, like I said, could be a little bit unclear. Like you might receive information, downloads, things like that from your higher self. But I feel like sometimes, again, there's doubt there. Um, feeling confused sometimes um, because there still might be some illusions that are there but I feel like you're slowly by surely working towards uh, realizing what those limitations are to help you to kind of release them you know we do have the healer here so some of you might even feel called to some type of healing modality healing work um, some of you I'm even kind of getting here your healing generations um, maybe even of trauma. For some of you, this is going back at least three generations of healing here, at the very least. Um, mm, what do I want to say here? You have expectation here. You know, I feel like when, when we're on our spiritual path, it is important for us to let go of expectations to a certain degree because sometimes we might have attachments, right, to specific outcomes in the way that things are working out. So I do feel like it's important for you to release expectations, especially with your healing, right? Don't, don't feel like when you're on your spiritual path, I feel like there's, there is a need for you to give yourself grace, give yourself compassion, kindness, um, not be so hard on yourself and kind of feeling, why am I not further along? You know, sometimes we want to rush or have this feeling like we want to rush through the journey. We want to hurry up and do this or hurry up and find this out and hurry up and things be clear for us. And that's just not the way that our spiritual path is meant to work you know if we all kind of race to the finish line then that would kind of take out a lot of those experiences that we have to you know in which we gain all of that wisdom and knowledge going through the experiences that we go through 
you know. We do have hope here, and so I feel like you are someone who is truly remaining optimistic about your transformation, about your growth. Um, what else do I want to say here? I'm kind of getting some of you might be healing a lot of familial, ancestral um, cycles here. You know, there could certainly be certain belief systems, like I said, that you're working towards releasing here. There's still, I feel like, a lot that you're learning, a lot that is still hidden from you, a lot that is still unknown. And you have to trust that the further that you progress along your spiritual path, more and more is going to be revealed to you, okay? When we go through our spiritual awakening and we're working on our spiritual path, everything is not revealed to us at once. It comes, you know, initially we might have this awakening, right? Or wait, we kind of are seeing something in a different way. But then as we further along our path, we continue to have realization, 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 um, time and time again. And so like I said, I still feel like there's a lot of this energy here that you're working through. Okay, so be patient, be kind to yourself. Um, some of you, this could have to do um, when it comes to love. Okay, some of you, this could be your love life uh, or even uh, connections with others that could be being affected here. Um, there could be a need for a lot of self-love, a lot of emotional release, a lot of you taking time to heal, self-love. Um, what else do I want to say here? Yeah, and I feel like you might also be at a time right now, too, where, you know, there may be certain things that you did have, maybe say a certain expectation that something would work out a certain way, and then finding that it isn't working out in, in the way that you'd hoped, you know, and you could be realizing the illusion that may have been, say, surrounding a certain thing, you know, and then it being revealed to you that may perhaps it wasn't something that was in alignment for you. Okay, so you might be experiencing a lot of endings in your life, and that might mean uh, friendships, you know, that that are, that are leaving your life. It could be that there are um, certain people's motives that are being revealed to you. You know, you're finding out who your friends really are. You're finding out, you know, who is on your side, who is on your team. You might be finding that and looking at people in a very different way, the connections that you have in your life, um, you know, things that you might have perceived a certain way in the past and had certain expectations about. It's kind of like little by little, you're, you're kind of releasing one illusion at a time surrounding something. And I feel like it's certainly something that's helping you to bring awareness to all of that. Okay. There, like I said, I feel like there's still a lot of unknowns you know, you are in this process of healing. And I feel like a lot of it is centered around the inner child, which is also super important for us. Um, what else do I want to say here? Hmm. Many of you, I also feel like you're healing your throat chakra. Okay, the throat chakra. This is learning to find your voice, learning how to speak your truth. Um... This could also be changing mindset for some of you. Um, this could be a change away from limiting self-sabotaging thoughts. Um, even your inner dialogue, okay, could certainly be something that is changing and growing here. Mm. Being that we have moss, you know, butterflies, I do see them, you know, as a symbol of transformation. I mean, all of them, whether it's the moth or the butterfly, they still go through those stages of pain that they go through from becoming or being the caterpillar and then, you know, them being in the cocoon, their body liquefying, and then transforming into the moth or the um, butterfly. So I do feel like there is, you know, a lot of transformation, yes, that is happening for you. But moths, are also, you know, I'm sure you've all heard the, the, the saying about like moths to a flame, right? Where moths get attracted um, to flames and they could end up getting hurt because they burn their wings. 
um, but they're so drawn to it. So with that, you know, moths also only live, they have a very short lifespan. Um, they only survive a few days and they are in the dark. Um, and so they are in a, in a way, in, we, in a way that we can look at it spiritually is like they are literally navigating their way through the dark to find the light. Okay navigating the way through the dark to find the light. And for those of you that follow my other channel, Moon Moth Goddess, um, most of you know, you've seen me, I have a huge tattoo on my chest um, <laughs> that is a moth with a moon right on top of my throat. And I actually got that tattoo before I even went through my spiritual awakening. I, I got the moth with the moon on it um, before I even, yeah, before even my YouTube career or life of, of, was even a thought in my mind. Um, but I'm also somebody who's gone through a lot of darkness, a lot of trauma. And so for me at that time back then, you know, d being drawn to moths and the symbolism behind it, I thought for myself, like that's the tattoo that I, I wanted. It says a lot about my own journey personally and about having lived through a lot of darkness for the good majority of my life. Um, I've shared with you guys in the past that a lot of my own life was in the dark, in a dark night of the soul, where I didn't actually start living and functioning like a normal person um, until I was almost 40 years old. So in that box, with limiting beliefs, with victim mentality, um, having gone through a lot of abuse, a lot of trauma, um, and not able to get myself out of it, you know? So for me, the moth symbolism says a lot about you and your journey personally, where for maybe for some of you, you have or you are navigating your way through your darkness right now to find your, your inner light here and working towards healing that which is also a beautiful thing. There's also this light here in the center here with the inner child here too. You know, we've got this beautiful little um, fire there within the hearth. You know, I'm feeling like there is, I feel like certainly feeling a lot more peace as you're kind of having realization after realization. Like I said, a lot of things that are being illuminated. Some of you, it could even be that you're starting to notice a lot of familiar patterns that are being very evident to you, you know, where you're noticing uh, generational cycles, trauma, like so much I feel like is is being brought to your attention. And it may be with others that around you, it could even be things that you're seeing within yourself where you're acknowledging uh, certain patterns of behavior that need to change certain ways of thinking that are limiting you. Okay. So like I said, I do feel like Spirit's saying you are working on it. You know, it is slow and steady, but this is you really committing yourself to that growth, okay? To really truly discovering yourself and who you are and how you fit into the world and, you know, um, what else do I want to say? Hmm. Yeah, I certainly feel like you're working towards releasing old versions of self, okay, as you are moving through um, this energy here, okay? Also, because, like I said, the background story with this card where she just, like, she's she's pretending, right, that she's the beekeeper when she's really not. So this also makes me feel that many of you are discovering yourself. You're discovering your true identity, okay? You might also be separating yourself from labels you know where maybe sometimes certain labels may have fit at a certain time um and now kind of breaking away from them you know like i said i am someone who really i was in victim mentality for the majority of my life um really feeling in a very, very low vibrational, fear-based thinking, um, definitely fight or flight, survival mode, 
it was, it was, it was painful. You know, when I look back on that old version of myself that was in that place, like I, I feel like, like sad, sorry for myself in that way. You know, a lot of having to live that way. And I can, I, I know, you know, in the collective, there's, like I said, everybody's on their path in different stages. Um, you know, it was definitely a place of suffering for me throughout the majority of my life. A lot of feeling like I didn't fit in. Um, but yeah, this makes me feel that maybe through certain experiences, it has, for some of you, created an inauthentic sense of self where we kind of label ourselves certain things, you know, that are attached to old experiences. And I feel like many of you are really learning to shed away those layers of self that are not really you, labels that are not really you, and really learning to separate yourself from that and discover who you really are. Um, so this might be, you know, a lot of you kind of on this path of discovery and questions and, you know, there might be a lot of confusion right now as you're trying to navigate through all of this and understand everything and all the changes you're going through. Um, and so again, give yourself grace, be kind, um, be patient, okay with yourself. This can, you know, especially for those of you that have had a lot of conditioning right through childhood and past experiences and you know, generational traumas and things like that, it takes a little bit, right? You have to remember that sometimes these are things that are very deeply ingrained within us. If you've gone through traumas, it's not just something that's affecting, you know, your mind and your emotions that changes you as a person. And so this requires a deeper amount of time and investment to really work towards healing the body and everything that it is holding on to because it can do so much to change you as a person. Um, so again, be kind, give yourself grace, um, take it slow, don't feel this need to just kind of rush through and hurry up and, you know, put place these expectations on yourself that you should be further along by now or why it isn't this figured out yet and why you know just give yourself that time be patient with yourself okay as you are working through this and having this you know one thing be illuminated at the time for you to just kind of sit with and uh, work through okay so I do want to see what your advice is here. Um, this is the Kuan Yin Oracle. And as I was telling Piling 1, I'm telling Pile 1 and Pile 2, I don't really use this deck for collective readings. I bought it for myself about five years ago. Um, but I'm going to, I don't know. It just, as soon as I was asking Spirit sitting here before I started the reading, I was asking Spirit, what 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 deck are we using um, for, for collective's guidance? And it was this one. And I was like, really? Do I have to share? <laughs> Do I have to share my deck? Um, but that's the one that we're going with. So I'm going to take a quick peek because this deck does have some imagery that's not very YouTube friendly. Um, and yeah, this one needs to be covered up a little bit. So I'm going to show you a little bit without showing too much, but I'm just going to cover her up a little bit. Okay. So we've got number 30. It says, spin the silken thread divine. I'm just going to cover her. I'll put it right there. Okay, so this is number 30. In creating precious silks, there is a sorting process. Sifting out that which is broken to find that which is precious and pure. So think of this in terms of symbolism of you, right? In your sorting process is basically where Spirit's saying. You're in the sorting process of sifting out which is broken to find which is precious and pure, which is within you. You are commencing a new cycle, beloved, and it is time to allow for that which is more precious and pure that which you wish to take with you into the future, to continue and to release that which does not align with your true heart. Sometimes we need to help ourselves access the new cycle by releasing 
vows from this or other lifetimes, releasing old emotional patterns and calling in wisdom and talents from past lifetimes. You are guided to accept this healing now. Your past is calling to you. It is calling to be cleared to be released and for the beauty and power of the past to be claimed in the present moment, woven together like a precious rare silk. All the experiences, mistakes, adventures, and successes of your past in this and other lifetimes have given your soul plenty of material from which to draw its wisdom. Like fine silken threads being woven into a beautiful fabric, it has now I'm sorry, it has had to grow in awareness, light, capacity, and love in order to be where it is now. You are being guided by Kuan Yin now to realize that your past is nothing to be ashamed of. Even the worst mistakes that you may have judged yourself or others for have been opportunities to really grow in love. The precious silk could not be formed without the rough layers of the cocoon, Interesting how this is talking about a cocoon and you have the moss and the butterflies here. Wow. Within which the pure thread is spun by the silk worm. So too, have you been able to weave something truly beautiful within the experiences of your life? Even those which you no longer need to carry with you as memories or scars. There comes a time to extract the pure thread and cast aside that which is unusable. You are at a point, beloved, where you must choose to empty out old emotional baggage and take forward with you the gifts, skills, wisdom, and talents you have developed through many lifetimes so that you may move into the new cycle that is calling you forward. Sometimes you can feel very unfamiliar and cause us some anxiety as we do not have the old emotional or behavioral patterns to hold on to as we go through life. Yet there is no need to be fearful of this process because as you release the old, a beautiful new patterning will be emerging from within you. You will have new emotions, new ways of being available to you, born of your past experiences but not limited by them. Kuan Yin, mistress of spinning the spiritual silk, is with you, and the process can be filled with peace, joy, and love. You will feel lighter for this process and more able to be your divine self in all parts of your life. And I think with that, I'm going to, there's a little healing and prayer thing here for those of you um, that are wanting that. It starts over here and then kind of goes across this page, so... I'm going to put that open for those of you that want to screenshot that and do that for yourself uh, later. Okay. Wow. I can't believe <laughs> that you guys got two butterflies and two moths here. But, you know, it really is. I feel like showing there's a, there's a lot of transformation here. And I, it almost kind of makes me feel too... Because of that saying, you know, how like, like moths to a flame where they end up, you know, burning themselves. And this makes me feel like with the seven of cups here with illusions, perhaps some of you may have, right, fallen for certain illusions in your life. And it ended up being something that kind of led you down the wrong path. You know, or I don't even want to say the wrong path. I want to say maybe more or less there could have been a better choice, you know, to make. But this makes me kind of feel like you may have been drawn towards something that created this illusion of, I don't know, just something like, okay, let's just say it's for example for love. You know, that's an easy one where you, you get led down this path by a person who's creating this illusion of stability or security or happiness. And you're kind of finding that as you're that moth that is attracted to that light that's creating this illusion here, that you end up getting burned. You end up getting hurt, right? Or, you know, getting uh, attracted to something that looks almost like it's too good to be true. Something that's an illusion here. 
you know. So perhaps some of you, you know, you might still be in that place where you're still learning how to discern what is truth, what is my intuition, you know, still learning how to fine tune. I, I kind of feel like, you know, sometimes our own inner voice, you know, where our intuition is coming through, sometimes it does get overshadowed by the ego and by fears and insecurities. And it kind of leads us in a completely different direction than where our intuition may have been leading us. And so we might then, right, find out, ah, this was an illusion. I wasn't seeing something clearly. I'm confused or I'm clouded or something of that nature. Okay, so I feel like you guys are still certainly working through that energy. But like I said, be kind, give yourself grace um, as you're kind of moving through this process. Again, don't compare yourself to anyone else's journey. Your journey is your own. This is Spirit saying here, continue to commit yourself to taking those little steps, little by little, of uncovering uh, truths, your own soul's truth, and ident being able to be better discerning of identifying where there might be certain illusions surrounding your belief systems, um, you know, versions of self, um, past versions of self that are tied into certain things, or even people around you, you know, that you might have um, in your life or even certain situations, you know, that you have to really be very clear about to making sure that you're choosing what is absolutely best to support your soul's growth um, and evolution at this time. So that is all that I have for you, pile three. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading.